Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Tiffany Stannard, CEO and founder of Prestige Concepts, LLC. Tiffany, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am excited to have you here. I, I keep teasing you because one week, uh, about a month ago, yes. we were together and you just had a whirlwind week of awards and presentations yes. <laughs> and you are sort of, as the commercials say, everywhere, everywhere. Yes, I how was. Do you, how do you manage that hectic schedule? That week was crazy. It was okay. Philly Tech Week. It was National mm -hmm. Small Business Week. So I was representing tech for not only my client Microsoft, but also for Philly Tech Week. And all of the events literally just happened to happen that same week. So mm -hmm. I had seven events in five days, and it was amazing. It, it really helps you understand why you do what you do mm -hmm. when you get booked that many times in one week. It was well, awesome. <laughs> well, you were the perfect person to be booked. Thank and it you. was really fun being on that panel. Yes. Uh, you know, for Tech Week. Yeah, that um, was probably one yeah. of my favorite events because mm -hmm. speaking about Jenna Crowley and just understanding the importance of it, and I work a lot with men. Like, most of my team is men for both of my companies. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to go into a room and still have men and not have enough women in the room talking mm -hmm. about from tech to gender to diversity. So it's mm -hmm. important. Well, those are all significant topics, yeah. tech, gender, yes. diversity, yes. and we're going to start right at the beginning mm -hmm. with you. Okay. And what's your significant story that got you on this path of entrepreneurship? I mean, I guess for you, entrepreneurship X, because mm. you, you are a serial <laughs> entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of fell into entrepreneurship. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely not something within my immediate family, maybe my extended family, but my immediate family was like nurse, correctional officer, um, various industries, definitely mm -hmm. nothing to do with entrepreneurship. Um, right before I graduated high school, I started a business class. And first class, I went to a Catholic school, all girls. Mm -hmm. So their fun activities were religion. So they didn't have a lot of extra classes. So they mm -hmm. did that class right before I graduated. So that kind of sparked, oh, there's other things to life besides being a doctor or being a nurse. Mm -hmm. And then throughout high school, I was working in events. And I started doing events. I graduated high school, 16 going on 17. So I graduated a little early mm -hmm. and moved out immediately after that and started working on events and different projects and decided to start doing events full time. And still was working different jobs. I was a bartender. I did payroll. I did so many different oh jobs. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Bartender and payroll. Yes, okay, completely that's, opposite. That's a, right, but that's I was always good with numbers. I have not heard. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So I started working on those different industries. Started working mm -hmm. with the company. Mm -hmm. The company closed, and I ended up having a lot of their clientele because I was the main person on their projects. So really started mm -hmm. doing events full time under TK Production, but it wasn't my official company yet. And then I started working with payroll, doing uh, payroll for Sunoco mm -hmm. on the East Coast, all of their East Coast uh, clients. And then started getting really into events and marketing. And then at that time, it was around the recession when they stopped hiring for outside event planners. So mm -hmm. everybody within the company became the event planners. Right, they right. did the marketing, they did the events, or they brought in interns. Mm -hmm. So I needed to learn a new skill in order to get and keep my clients. Mm -hmm. So my experience of getting into technology was when somebody, a guy that was referred to me to do my website, he did an okay job and then as time went on, he did an even worse job. Mm -hmm. And I could not figure out how to do the back end of my, of my website. Mm -hmm. So I said, how can I change this? So every time I would change something, he would charge me more. And I was like, well, that's not right. So I had to learn how to do my website. That was business. That, exactly, that was his <laughs> business. So I had to shut down my website, redo my website. I had to learn how to do my website. And then I started looking at my clients' websites and how bad they were, actually. Mm -hmm. And it was something they just didn't focus on. They focused on their events and the marketing, but not the actual website. So I learned how to do it. And then I said, hey, I can do websites, even though I only did my own. Mm -hmm. And I started to offer it as a service. And then I started to bring them back, not only as marketing clients, but then also for events when they started to hire and outsource mm -hmm. again for events. So then I rebranded my company to Prestige Concepts. Wow. Prestige Concepts. Mm -hmm. Those are two powerful words. Yeah. 
how did you, what made you decide to put those two words together for your company? It actually took a while. I was playing around with different words. At first it was TK Productions. And I was like, okay, we're, we're now doing more than events. Mm -hmm. So what are we creating? We were like, we're creating different concepts. What type of concepts? Like we just kept going over different words. Mm -hmm. I can't remember probably about 10, 15 different words that we came up with. And a friend of mine that was in real estate actually came up with the prestige part and we just mixed mm -hmm. it together. He was like, well, you're, you're creating these prestigious events and you're working a lot with corporations and they're trying to create this prestigious event that their, their clients are coming to, their employees are coming to. Mm -hmm. So why don't you call it prestige concept? And then you can grow into other things, the branding, the marketing, the events, mm -hmm. and you just create different concepts for them. Great idea. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So we end up rebranding it to that instead of keeping Good. it as my initials at the time. Good. Yeah. And that, that transition is important for entrepreneurship. Exactly. You know, people start out with a passion mm -hmm. and sometimes that it takes a while to connect that passion with where the clients mm -hmm. are willing to pay and the clients are willing exactly. to follow you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's hard to see your company five, ten years from now, right. but he saw that if you're going to grow into something bigger, you don't mm -hmm. want to just have production because it's going to limit the things you get hired for. Yes. So if you have different concepts, you can develop different tech concepts, marketing concepts, branding concepts, and really see in the future of tech at that time and even mm -hmm. social media because at that time, it was just Facebook and MySpace, but there was a lot of different things. Oh, my things. goodness, People not kinda, MySpace. Yes, MySpace. <laughs> at that time, I was heavily on MySpace. Okay. <laughs> because okay. at that time, Facebook was only for college students. Right. So I wasn't in college until about four or five years into my business. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to get on Facebook until years later. So okay. I was like, oh, this is new social media and trying this out. And at that time, you didn't even utilize it for business. It was just right. for personal. Right. So. So let's talk about your business. Mm -hmm. um, you clearly have different concepts, yes. <laughs> uh, different areas that you operate in. Where are you most passionate and why? It's funny because as years went on, I was most passionate about the event side when I first started mm -hmm. doing right. my company. And then fast forward, started in 2009, now fast forward to 2016, I'm more passionate about the branding and the marketing side mm -hmm. because I can come up with a marketing campaign in like five minutes. I can sit mm -hmm. down with a company, they can tell me what they're looking for and I can come up with different concepts literally in five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And that became my passion because of that creativity that lasted longer than mm -hmm. in online now compared to just doing, oh, a, doing an event. Good point. So you come up with these creative concepts. Mm -hmm. Um, it's about marketing and branding. Yes. How do you go about selling it and then making sure that people implement mm -hmm. the concept that you've shared with them? Yeah. So they I, might pay you, but yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean they'll do it. Exactly. Which right. they're definitely terrible <laughs> about doing that. Um, so I, I mix, especially depending on a clientele, I mix a little old school, new school, which okay. is online and offline. Okay. So okay. understanding that events are still important. You still want that experience because if you're selling a product or a service, they need to physically see that. So whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, restaurant or um, a tech app, people want to physically be in that presence of their app and that company. Mm -hmm. And then that online is that campaign, that creativity, the understanding that online and social media allows you to test things out before oh, you sure. even sell that product. So if you can gather a lot of social media followers and do well on Kickstarter, then that proves your market for you to do an event and know that people are going to actually show up. Mm. So now you're talking about results. Exactly. Testing, yes. listening, results. Exactly. What are some of the results that you're really proud of that you and your team have just executed almost flawlessly on? So we worked on a, a lot of projects over the years. Um, we did Circus LA. We were part of the group that helped them come back to Philadelphia. Okay. Um, they did two different shows throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. So we gathered about 40 different partnerships for them for mm -hmm. companies that have never seen or even heard of Circus LA, even though it's a national and global brand. Absolutely. There's a lot of people and a lot of companies that have never experienced it. So one, we was part of the team of bringing it here and then um, making sure that the sold out shows were every night throughout those three months that they were here. Mm -hmm. And then we started working with Microsoft a little, about a year and a half ago. And that's probably one of my biggest excitements because mm -hmm. my plan of working with them became a lot bigger as we started working together and I created this full plan of I want to get them as a client and I did and that was crazy even for me. So Can you share that story? Are there parts of that story yes, that you can I share? Can. Because that, um, those are entrepreneurial, significant entrepreneurial yeah, moments. It's definitely using your resources. So <laughs> I have a radio show on 100.3 
um, Philly Speaks, and I said one thing about having those resources, whether it's a blog that you're writing, people love media. I don't care what company you have. Everybody loves media, even a large brand such as Microsoft. And blogs and, and radio shows are starting to be as big as the New York Times mm -hmm. and you know those different media outlets. So I created a plan that Microsoft had a, a program called Youth Spark that focused mm -hmm. on entrepreneurship, young people, teaching them about STEM and technology. And I said, I wanna be a part of this program because all these things I did not learn as a child that I wish I knew now. So I want mm -hmm. to teach young okay. people. So I'm like, I'm gonna partner with them on this project. Mm -hmm. So they were flying to um, my, um, LA for a project and there's no local um, corporate co office here except for in um, PA. Mm -hmm. Nothing in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. nothing um, in Jersey. So I flew out there to do an interview for mm -hmm. the conference that they was working on. I said, Philly Speaks would love to hear more about what you're working on. Mm -hmm. I would love to interview them. So they gave me information and I ended up flying there for the conference. And then somebody actually that just moved to Philadelphia working for Microsoft was at the conference. Okay. They introduced me to them. We stayed connected. I said, there's a bunch of events coming up. People do not know about YouthSpark. Can I tell them about it? Mm -hmm. They were like, how would you like to do that? I want to do two events for you for free. And they said, for free? And I said, yes, for free. I will do two events for <laughs> you for free. That's a price they can't refuse. Exactly. They can't say no to free, right? Even Microsoft, they can't say no to free. So I ended up doing two events for them that introduced those two programs, one that focuses on small businesses and another one that focused in, on youth. And from that, that relationship built. And everybody Great. that I tried to get in touch with, through Microsoft, this cold emailing them, mm -hmm. were actually at my event. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've been trying to get in touch with you for like three months. It was like, uh, oh, well, we just didn't get your email. No, you ignored my email. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's be clear, you ignored my email. Well, they didn't know who you were. <laughs> exactly. You know, it so was just an idea. Me, it wasn't a concept. Exactly. It wasn't a prestige they were like, concept. Well, this lady emailing me <laughs> out the blue. So right. once I interviewed them and had media and we posted it, they started working with me, and then probably two months later, they asked me to be a keynote for one of their events mm -hmm. focused on diversity and um, STEM. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, I became a brand ambassador for Microsoft, and they became a client all within that year and a half. That so it was is a crazy, significant. <laughs> yes, but, a but crazy, intentional. Intentional, I mean, let's but... Let's not call it crazy. Yeah. It, entrepreneurs see opportunities, seize those opportunities, exactly. and then do the follow-up necessary. Yeah, and, that's what and you making do. that plan of whatever your right. resource is, how do you get in front of them? My resource mm -hmm. was my radio show, knowing mm -hmm. they were not going to say no to an interview, mm -hmm. and getting press about the things that they were a part of and sponsoring mm -hmm. and the programs that they were creating. So for another person, if they have a blog that's important, they have a great following, a company such as Microsoft would love to be a part of that, and people sure. forget that brands pay for that type of influence. Wow, influence. Yeah. That is a great way to sort of wrap up our interview. Yes. How, in maybe 30 seconds or less, mm -hmm. how do you help people with their influence? I help people in multiple ways, understanding what, I, it took me a while to learn that it's mm -hmm. okay to have multiple passions mm -hmm. and there is a way to bring it all together because sometimes you get labeled, you're doing too much, or, you know, even with the, the statement of serial entrepreneur, sometimes that is not always a great label because it means you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. But if you find a great common denominator to wrap it all together, like mine is technology. Mm -hmm. So being in music, being in entertainment, being in technology, and wrapping it all together with that common denominator, allowing me to teach it and talk about it and have it as a company as well. Wow. That's wonderful. Tiffany, I know that folks want to get in touch with you. I mean, the fact that you have mentioned multiple areas. Yes. <laughs> there's folks that said, wait a minute, music, entertainment? Mm -hmm. So how can they get in touch with you and Prestige Concepts? Yeah, so they can go to prestigeconceptsllc.com or email me at tiffany at prestigeconceptsllc.com as well. And social media, I'm on everything. Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> just put in my name. <laughs> we're we're going to have to have you back and talk a little bit about some of those technologies. Yes, the uh, many of them. Before the show, you were like, okay, I'm going to put this on Snapchat. Yes. And I'm thinking, mm, that's not what I know. Yes. <laughs> so. It's actually awesome, and they say it's for millennials. But trust me, brands are really embracing it, and they're paying really? big bucks for it. Okay, yeah. well, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> Significant business results, Snapchat. Yes, okay, yes, I got it. Yes. I got it. Well, Tiffany, thanks for being on the show. I love your energy. Thank you. Um, continue doing what you're doing. Thank you. You are out in the forefront. And I'm excited to continue and work with you more. Good, good, excellent. Great.
Well, folks, there you have it. Significant stories from significant entrepreneurs like Tiffany. I'm Fran McNeil. I would love to have you continue to join us. We have more to come. Thank you.